Good afternoon, colleagues. It's two o'clock here in um, Amsterdam, and we'll uh, we'll be starting the webinar on um, uh, UPD uh, for market authorization holders, and particularly focusing on submission of volume of sales uh, data. First, I would like to welcome everybody to this uh, webinar. My name is Behan Mustafov. I work at the Veterinary Medicines Division of uh, EMA. I'm currently the UPD EMA product owner. My colleague Anna Vicente is from Information Management uh, Division of EMA, and she is the business analyst. Today, we also have with us Eva Martinez from the EMA Service Desk, as well as a few colleagues from the EMA Change Management team that support the UPD. Now, um, some housekeeping rules. The presentation will be made available on the events page in the upcoming days. The webinar is being recorded, and by participating, you agree with that. The recording will be made available on events webpage and um, uh, my YouTube channel in due time. If you are experiencing video or audio issues, please exit the meeting and log in again. Make sure you select the correct audio outputs. Should you continue experiencing issues, please contact virtual meetings at emma.europa.eu. By default, all attendees are muted. Questions can be typed into Slido. Interactions via Slido is voluntary and you may opt to remain anonymous. If you choose to use Slido, you consent to the processing of your personal data. Please note that it is not possible to post questions directly on WebEx. In order to access, uh, to access the Slido site, site, please scan the QR code with your phone or go to slido.com and input the code 3024790. Take a note of it, but if you didn't manage, don't worry. The code is also written on every slide in this presentation. As this session is dedicated to volume of sales, we'll focus on this functionality only. Questions related to any other UPD functionalities will not be visible and remain unanswered. From now on, you can type in your questions and the product team will try to answer them at the end of our presentations, presentation or in writing as we go, provided that we have the time and capacity. Due to time restrictions, we may not be able to address all questions during the Q&A part. Do not worry if your questions have not been answered, these will be collated and addressed in a future webinar or frequently asked question document published on the agency website. We'll start with a demo, followed by most frequently reported issues and um, some tips and tricks to avoid errors. We plan 15 minutes for Q&A around uh, 2.40 this afternoon. As we anticipated um, some questions, uh, which will be related to what data and by when should be submitted, let me try to clarify it here. As announced at the last Vet Medicines Info Day in February 2023, the submission deadline for annual volume of sales for the 2022 data is by the end of June 2023 and will not be extended. This was also clarified last week at a meeting with representatives of industry association and I believe that you will hear from your respective associations very soon, or maybe in the meantime you already you are already informed. Please submit as much data as you can for the 2022 EEA cells for centrally and non-centrally authorized medicines, and as complete data as possible. Um, do not submit um, non-EEA cells at this time. It is understood that some packages might still not be correct in the UPD and submission of 2022 sales data for these packages might be obstructed. Therefore, when justified, the data is not expected. National competent authorities have been reminded and will uh, be reminded um, um, at frequent occasions that packages should not be deleted and replaced with a new entry for the same package. 
they should also uh, avoid um, swapping the content, the content, I mean the data of two packages. Package IDs must be kept as stable as possible. Next year, when submission of 2023 sales data becomes mandatory, then you should be submitting complete data sets. Before closing, the meeting will give you an overview of helpful information and supporting uh, material. And without further ado, I'd like to pass now to Ana Vicente. So thank you very much, Behan, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, please go to the next slide. Before going to the demo, let me first highlight that this webinar has been prepared to demonstrate how a marketing authorization holder can provide volume of sales data to the union product database. And it is mainly focused on those users who will perform this process manually using the application Excel. So here we have the five steps that a user will need to follow. Uh, the first one, uh, and in this uh, demonstration, a, a user from Soetis, a marketing authorization holder from Soetis, will perform uh, all these five steps. So the first one, after having logged in into the Union Product Database Portal, the marketing authorization holder will retrieve all the information for all the packages that are under his responsibility. This information will be really useful because it will help the marketing authorization holder to do the mapping between the packages in UPD and the packages in, the, in their own systems. Uh, in the next step, the user will need to prepare the CSV file with the volume of sales, and once that is ready, it will be submitted. In the fourth step, the user will check the status of the submission and whether it has been successful or not. And finally, if the submission was successful, the marketing authorization holder will be able to retrieve the volume of sales data in UPD. And now, Beham, please proceed with the demo. This is the Union Product Database portal, and the first thing that they will do is to log in into the Union Product Database. As mentioned before, I will represent an employee from Soetis. So I need to provide my user, my password, And now, once that I am in, I will go to the volume of sales area, which is located within the other post authorization data. The first thing that I will do is to download the list of packages. And now, by pressing the download button, the system will generate a CSV file containing the information concerning the packages for all the products belonging to the organizations I am affiliated to. This CSV file will be stored in my computer in the download area. So here we can verify this is already done. Now, how to open the CSV file? There are different ways to open the document and what we will demonstrate today is the one that based on our experience has given the best results. This method is also explained in the chapter seven of the VET implementation guide. We will use Excel to open the CSV file that separates the information in each row by commas. Then I'm going to launch Excel. And we need to open a blank workbook. We need to go to the tab data, to the tab data, get data, from file, from CSV file. And now we select the document that we have just downloaded. So I take the document. And now the system will do a representation of the data uh, in one table. It seems that there all the information is OK. So we are going to transform the data. And finally, we need to save this transformation. So we press on close and load. And now we have all our packages in this CSV file in Excel. So in this case, we have 8,226 packages.
This is the volume of sales file that contains from column A to column M information related to my packages and from column N to column S the information that I will need to supply. So we have here product identifier, product name, permanent identifier, authorization procedure number, pack identifier and pack description, pack size numeric value, pack size unit of presentation, unit of presentation identifier, country and country identifier, marketing authorization number and creation date of a product. The rest of the columns is the information that we will need to supply. And before starting to prepare the data, please be aware that you have the flexibility to decide the number of products to be included in each one of the submissions. And you also have the flexibility to decide the periodicity with which you will make the submissions, as long as the annual volume of sales are in UPD each year by the deadlines established by the agency. Now, in order to prepare the volume of sales file, I will need to select the packages for which I want to provide the volume of sales. And for this exercise, I have prepared a product with a single package that is valid for two target species, dogs and cats. So my product name contains product one. And once selected, I will need to remove the rest of the products on the file. And again, there are many ways to do it. I will just make uh, one. I want to, I will highlight in yellow the product. And now I will filter by all the products that are not highlighted in yellow. And these are all the products that I need to remove. So I'm going to select the whole table and I will tell to Excel that I want to delete all of them. So delete entire sheet row. And now if we filter again by color, or if we clear the filter, we will see that our Excel file only contains one product. We will convert now to numeric value the numbers of 12 or more digits that Excel has converted to scientific notation. But first, I will try to feed all the columns into the main screen. Now I will select the three columns which are with scientific notation, that is the permanent identifier, the pack size, unit of presentation identifier and the country identifier and we will convert to numeric and without decimals. Remember that the information that will be considered by the system for the volume of sales is the package identifier, the country identifier, and the specific information for volume of sales. All the rest of the information, even though we can submit with the file, will be ignored by the system. And now let's proceed with the submission uh, of volume of sales and with our scenario. Uh, I will provide the volume of sales for the year 2022 where we had sales only between January and June. And as explained before, there is no need to provide zero sales for the period between July and December because we didn't have any sales. So let's start with January. January to June. We have here the six rows. Now, following the guidance from chapter seven, we need to provide a row per package, per country, and per species. Therefore, given that we have two species, dogs and cats, we need to duplicate the number of rows. And this detail is very important since we have users that were trying to enter two species into one cell. So we have, we have here the, uh, all the months and now we are going to order by date. So January to June. Now uh, I will also replicate the values on the rest of the cells. And we will start providing more detail on the volume of sales data. We are going to provide the species uh, and please uh, 
bear in mind that we need to retrieve the identifiers from the species in uh, the RMS list of a species and know the target species one. Okay, so this is the value for cats and this is the one for dogs. Now we will convert into numeric value again. We remove two decimals and now we have here the value for cats and for dogs that we will replicate as well into the other uh, cells. Next, we are going to provide the volume of sales and let's say that for January we sold 100 units, 200 for February and so on. The species split represents the percentage of sales over the total for each of the species. For European Economic Area sales, the total for all species uh, for one package should be 100, whereas for non-EEA sales, there will be a margin of tolerance. Let's say that for the month of January, out of the 100 packages that were sold, 70% were sold for cats and 30 for dogs. Now, for the rest of the packages and for the sake of simplicity, we will add the same number to all of them, 50%. Now we move to the dose factor that uh, represents the average number of animals of a particular species that can be treated using one package. So let's say that uh, we need 0 0.5 uh, packages to treat a uh, cat and one package to treat a dog. And finally, <clears throat> the comment field is optional and can be used to provide extra information to consuming systems like pharmacovigilance. Now that we have all the volume of sales information ready, we will need to prepare the file to be safe as CSV. So first, we will need to remove the empty sheet as CSV does not support workbooks containing multiple ones. So we go to this tab and we delete it. Now we only keep one. And second, we will need to clean the format of the cells before converting the document as we want to reduce the chance of adding unwanted characters to our document during the conversion. So we are going to place the cursor um, on the table. We go to the table design option on top. And here we will tell to uh, Excel that we want to convert to range. We will accept the message. And now it's not anymore a table, even though we see the colors of a table. So now we are going to delete all the uh, colors as well. I will take, uh, this is one of the different uh, ways that you can do, you can perform this action. I will take the uh, rows, the format of the row uh, 14, and I will apply the same format to the rest of the cells. And now our document is ready to be saved. We go to File, we save the document, and we want to save it in our folder. And we will need to add a descriptive name. Webinar 24 of April, product one, 2022. We indicate to Excel that we want to save a CSV file comma delimited And now we save it. 
got it and now it's ready to be sent to be submitted it is time to submit the volume of sales and to that end we will return to the UPD portal once inside we will navigate again to the volume of sales section and this time we will select the option submission of volume of sales here we will need to select our file and now we are ready to submit if you get the error number four which is a normal scenario we recommend to review the document but this time open it with a text editor like notepad I move to my folder and I open with Notepad. Once there, I will check if my document has white lines at the end of the document. So as you can see with the cursor, we have a white line. So we need to remove it by deleting one space. And now, Due to the configuration in my computer, Excel has saved the document with semicolon instead of with commas. Therefore, I will need to replace all of them. So I go to Edit, Replace, and then Replace All. And now we can save the document. And it's ready again for submission. So save close and now we return again to the volume of sales and now we will try to submit again the new file we delete the error message we select the file and we press once again the button if the submission pass validation, the system will send me to the view submission of volume of sales page where I will be able to review its status. And as you can see on the right side, the submission status is in progress. While the submission is in progress, I will show you what would happen if the document had contained errors. In that case, the system will generate an error report in CSV format indicating the type of error in each row affected. So we are going to take this one as an example. The system generates the error report. I will open with Excel. I will change now uh, using another uh, way the Excel to a more readable format. I go to data, text to columns, transform delimited by comma. And here we have our report of errors. So we only have one error in all the rows and is that the package identifier provided does not belong to a product under the user responsibility. Uh, in the chapter seven of the VET implementation guide, you will have the complete list of errors that might happen. And now we will come back to the UPD portal. Since the submission has a valid status, now you might want to see the volume of sales that you have submitted. So we go to the last option in the menu of volume of sales, view volume of sales. And once in this screen, the first thing that we will need to do is to select the product for which we want to see the volume of sales. And the second step to select the period of time for which we want to see this uh, data. So it's the year 2022 from January to December 2022. Now we press the download sales. And the system will generate a new CSV file containing this information. Here is the report. We launch again Excel. I 
I will convert now to a more readable format the information. So I select the first column. I go to the data tab. I select text to column. Delimited by comma. And here is the information that we were submitting before. So we can also, uh, again, change the format of the scientific uh, numbers. And here you can see that this is the information that we had submitted during our session. So for January 100, 200 for February, and so on. And of course, we don't have volume of sales for the months from July to December. And this is the last step in the submission of volume of sales. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now uh, we are going to continue with the presentation. Uh, and to mention that in order to prepare this webinar, we have counted with the collaboration of the EMA Service Desk team. They have provided very valuable uh, information on the user experience in the context of the volume of sales, uh, and that has helped us to identify the most relevant challenges and the most common questions asked by the users. So we will start first with the challenges. Uh, the first one uh, is when trying to open in the download file of volume of sales. So data may appear corrupt. Uh, and while for some of the users, the file appears correct by sim simply double clicking and opening the Excel file, for others, the file appears corrupt due to the user's regional configuration. In that case, uh, please follow the recommendation from the video that we have just prepared for you and it will be shared uh, in order to avoid this uh, corrupted data. Uh, and similar to the next one of the challenges, that is when trying to submit the volume of sales. So the error number four, the number of columns provided is not correct. This error is uh, mainly caused by Excel corrupting the data when converting uh, to a CSV format, uh, the data that has been prepared. And this is again due to, to the regional configuration. So please follow uh, our recommendations. Uh, the next one, next point, compiles different issues related to the data format, also mentioned during the demo. Uh, first one, numbers turned by Excel into scientific notation. Uh, addition of multiple values in the same cell. Empty lines or extra rows after the last row in the uh, Excel file. Uh, and the use of semicolon as separator instead of a comma. And finally, uh, the use of RMS terms from the target species list. Uh, this we need to highlight because some uh, users are using from the target species list from RMS and you should use only uh, terms from the species list. Uh, next slide, please. Now, moving to the uh, most frequently asked questions. The first one is the accepted which browsers are accepted by UPD. So uh, UPD has been implemented to be supported by Chrome and Edge. Therefore, we discourage users from using other browsers like Firefox that, for example, does not recognize the CSV file format for volume of sales. Uh, the second one is the reported volume of sales for packages that were deleted in UPD because were created in error. Uh, so a package in UPD can be deleted by a competent authority for two reasons as a result of a variation or because it was created uh, in error by the user. In both cases, the package will appear in the CSV file and sometimes will be difficult for marketing authorization holders to identify which are the valid packages for which they need to support or to provide the volume of sales. For this reason, and during this first year of reporting, it is assumed that some inaccurate data related to this issue could be reported to UPD. And finally, submission of sale, uh, sales. Here to emphasize that there is no requirement to submit zero sales against packs which have not been sold. Uh, next slide, please. And here we have prepared uh, some takeaway messages we think are really important. We have been also reading your questions uh, and we hope that uh, these takeaway messages answered uh, 
a lot of them. So the first one, the volume of sales uh, value for each month must be the same. So if you see on the screenshot in the column O, uh, we have uh, one package for two target species and the volume of sales is the same number, it's 100. Um, related to a species, uh, first, a species field shall be filled in with one term from the species list and not from the target species list. Uh, next, for each of the species in a package, there must be a row in the CSV file, except for those species for which no sales were made. Uh, and last one related to species, the species percentage for each species for EEA sales should be a number and also are allowed for decimal places. Uh, next one, no specific naming convention is required for the name of the file. Uh, and next, when submitting the volume of sales file, the time to completion of the business validation will depend on the server load. So if you are submitting large files for volume of sales, please uh, try to come back a uh, yeah, few uh, minutes, hours later. And if you see that it has not been processed yet, yet then uh, even try next day. Uh, next slide, please. So if there are errors in your submission file, the system will generate another CSV file, a report of errors, like it has been demonstrated, uh, containing an error message at the end of each row where it has encountered an issue. Uh, next, a single error prevents the data upload of the whole uh, submission or submitted CSV file. So it is essential that a complete corrected file is resubmitted. So you can do either you correct the data and you submit the file, or you delete the, consistently the data that has errors, you submit the correct data, and then you handle the errors in, uh, in a later stage. Um, now, for user, users developing system, uh, systems to submit the volume of sales, it is essential that the file, um, that the file your system produces does display the mandatory data. Uh, this has been also mentioned during the demo, so you only need to provide the mandatory data that is the package identifier, country identifier, year, month, volume of sales, a species identifier, a species split, and those factor. Um, and now uh, to highlight the last point that you don't uh, need data in the columns which are not mandatory, but you also may find it useful. So some users, uh, we have... Um, it has been designed like this. You might find useful to have all the information and to understand uh, the complete information of the package. And if you submit, like it was uh, recorded during the video, if you submit all the columns, uh, the system will ignore and will not have validations for those ones that are not mandatory. And with this, uh, we have concluded the takeaway messages. Uh, handing over to you, Behan. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Anna. Okay, I will stop um, sharing now. It is um, 2.35. I would like to apologize for the um, fault that we had with, um, with the video, uh, but I hope that you managed to follow um, because I know that a number of you were also posting um, questions, and I hope that you will be able to uh, go back to this video when it is published and you'll find this information useful. With this, I will um, now pass on to uh, Christina and she will be sharing the, um, the questions and we will try to address them as much as we can in the next uh, 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bayan, for, for handing over and thank you to, to all the participants for being very active during the session and already sending a lot of questions. Uh, we will start from the most voted ones. Uh, please note that uh, while we are answering the question live, you can still upvote uh, the questions that you want to hear answered the most. So feel free to uh, join again through the code or through the QR link that you see now displayed and continue voting the questions. So let's start with the first one, the most voted one. UPD only contains products for UK and I, but the sales data typically come from the entire UK. 
Is it acceptable to submit full UK data to UK and I entries in UPD? Uh, doing otherwise might not be possible due to the way companies are keeping the information. Okay, I will try to um, address this one at uh, present. Um, we need only information for the EEA um, cells, and I would like to um, clarify here that uh, in my introduction, I didn't say that only for centrally authorized uh, medicines. Um, what I said in my introduction is that please submit as much data as you can for the 2022 EEA sales for centrally and non-centrally authorized vet medicines and as complete data as possible. Of course, if you have any issues with a specific data package, uh, we will understand uh, due to um, errors in UPD or incomplete data for that package. In UPD, we will understand uh, that the why this this information about a specific package cannot be provided, and we are not talking about products; we are talking about uh, packages. And with this, um, now the question: um, Of course, at at present, we have only um, information on um, marketing authorizations uh, for the UK Northern Ireland uh, territory. And we are interested only in this uh, data uh, because the functionality, uh, which I was planning to let you know about this at the end of, uh, of our slides, is that a new functionality about marketing authorization holders that will give the marketing authorization holder the possibility for product grouping uh, will be introduced um, later this, this quarter. And uh, we believe that this will greatly simplify the submission of uh, non-EA cells and in the future the third country uh, product names for market authorization holders. Uh, therefore, at present, we uh, do not expect from you and we ask you not to submit uh, a non-EA uh, sales data, because when the functionality is there, this is going to greatly uh, uh, facilitate your work as well. And uh, as I said, the functionality will be uh, in production by the end of uh, this quarter. So if you can, please try to submit as much as possible data for the UK Northern, Northern Ireland territory. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bayan. Let's go to the next uh, most, most voted question. In your example, the dose factor is 0 0.5 and you mentioned it is 0 0.5 packages to treat a cat. But according to the description of the dose factor, would it be two cats can be treated by a package and the dose factor would be two? Okay, give us, give us a second. We are reading the question again. Okay, um, in relation to, to this, I would like to, to clarify that a, a extensively um, revised Chapter 7 uh, is going to be published uh, tomorrow. Um, the version that it is at the moment on the uh, agency website, it is, I believe, 26 uh, pages. We have included a lot of information based on the um, uh, feedback and also experienced uh, gained. The revised chapter is um, 46 pages um, uh, at, at present, um, and it's going to be published uh, tomorrow. It also uh, gives um, an examples and um, clarifications. I, we hope that this is going the, the this new um, and extensively uh, updated chapter seven will provide you with um, a useful um, guidance which you will be able to to use um, 
for for the submissions and my my advice to you is um because the document is not in track changes uh please read the the document and when you have um questions or if you would like to get some further clarification please um raise your questions via the ask EMA and we'll provide you with the link um, at the end of um, this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, next one is for the target species that are not mentioned in Vol 9b, standard weights, which sources will be accepted in order to calculate the dose factor? Okay. Um, in relation to this, my advice will be, of course, uh, first try to to um, raise this this question via the uh, ask EMA because it is a general question. However, these um, you you have been um, submitting information about um, um, those factors, and um, you know very well how the the submission of such information uh, under the old legislation was was working and in the uh, for the uh, PSURs. So you have a lot of of experiences, and um, unless you are unable to find the clarification um, in the updated uh, chapter or chapters, uh, you can always um, liaise with us via them ask um, EMA. You also um, have, and we know that the colleagues in the Pharmacovigilance Working Party, they also have regular meetings with uh, stakeholders. You have the possibilities also to raise questions via these um, forums, um, which um, hopefully the colleagues from the Pharmacovigilance team will be able to respond because uh, uh, best knowledge, they have the best knowledge uh, in relation to this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next voted, most voted question is, we have multiple distributors across you. Is our aim to get data from distributors? Are we allowed to submit multiple files to the system? So I will try to answer this one, uh, if I understood properly the question. Uh, so a marketing authorization holder, you will need, as a marketing authorization holder, you will need to capture or to gather all the information related to your sales. How you will submit this information in UPD is up to you. So uh, a file, you don't need to submit all the products in one uh, file. You can split it uh, in either way. So you can decide to submit even for, even for one product or you can decide by distributors or uh, any other uh, yeah, thing that you consider that is useful for you. So UPD is not expecting a whole complete file of sales. You can split the information as you want. Thank you very much, Anna, for your reply. Next question, if there are no volume of sales and we have already entered months in column, is it okay to enter zero as a value or not to enter months at all for products with no sales? Christina, that answer has been provided in writing to the to the question in the Okay. Okay. Uh, we can we can, we can read it. We can read it. I can read it. In, uh, the answer to this question is, in case you have provided the months, then please provide zero as the system is expecting a number. Otherwise, the validation will fail. You can also delete the rows and then not submit sales for those packages. Thank you very much, Katarina. Okay, will the Q&A section from Slido also be published together with the rest of the webinar materials? Um, yes, um, we will try to uh, publish the video recording, the presentation, and also those questions that we managed to to answer, uh, and th these will be published. Um, I I would like to um, now use the, the opportunity to say that, of course, the, um, some um, questions may be 
um, well, some are not questions, they are comments. That's that's why you may not be able uh, uh, to see them. Um, it's um, I will I will not read them. Some uh, of the comments be, because um, in the interest of of time. But um, again, this is this is um, a webinar only for the for the volume of uh, sales. And um, Christina, next. Yes, clear. As bigger companies will have thousands of packages, is there any recommendation for automation? Okay, um, as far as we are aware, some uh, companies um, have already um, heavily invested in um, into um, automation and um, at, um, at present, if um, they have um, any issues, they try to address uh, them manually, but of course we are working with uh, um, subject matter experts uh, from the industry and also from the NCAs. We meet, meet on, a, on a weekly basis. We discuss as well with um, colleagues across the, the, the network to receive a further feedback and in due time uh, I, it will be also uh, possible to make further improvements into the volume of cells, but this will be a step-by-step -step gradual process. Thank you, Bayan. Since there is the possibility that for 2022 only a limited data set will be submitted, how will this be clarified when publishing the data, especially considering comparison over years? Um, okay, I don't. Um, I'm not quite sure what is what is meant by a limited uh, data set. I'll unfortunately I will have to repeat myself. Try to submit as much as uh, you can data. We have received a uh, feedback from um, industry representatives that, to a very very large extent, um, including. Um, um, the big um, companies, they uh, are in a position to submit um, data and some are already doing. So um, I would like to clarify again that we are not uh, asking to submit only a limited uh, data set. And um, in, of course, the 2022, um, we will accept if there is there are some data gaps, but these will need to be really on a justified uh, grounds. And gradually in 2023, for the for the volume of cells of uh, sorry in in 2024 for the volume of cells in 2023 uh, data set, I'm sure that they it, this will get better and better. Tomorrow there is a webinar for the national competent authorities uh, in order to address uh, uh, data quality issues in, uh, for products uh, per countries. And um, we we are also working uh, with the with the NCAs very closely and trying to address uh, these issues as soon as possible. But we understand that um, uh, that it may take some months. But this will be for a, uh, let's say, it might be on a data package and for only a small number of products. Just to remind you that we have 45,000 uh, products in, uh, in UPD and to a very large extent, uh, we understood that uh, companies are in a position uh, already to start submitting and some are submitting. Thank you. Thank you, Bayan. Uh, said along the presentation that you have already reminded HA about answering petitions about incorrect or missing presentations to be edited or added on UPD. How can we proceed if we've been waiting a few months and no answer is given to us? 
I can take this one, Cristina. Um, so it is, it is, uh, we understand the concerns behind it. Uh, as my colleague Behan said, the first step, one of the steps being taken is the an, a meeting tomorrow with the NCAs to highlight some um, data issues to, to be addressed. But at the same time, you should, and apologies for rephrasing this way, you should insist in the contacts in contact the NCAs. Uh, in the HMA website, you have a list of procedural contact points for each member state, and you have a series of email addresses that you should reach out and request the, 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 the update of the data. Now, having said that, if you don't know if you, you should be contacting the RMS or the CMS for the correction of the data, I would further advise you to look into Annex 1 of Chapter 2 that makes a clear distinction between what is the common data and the national data. We understand those, those concerns and we understand that you need to reach out as quickly as possible to the NCA. So please use these two guidance. One, the, con the procedural contact points in the veterinary se section of the HMA website and to uh, target your requests, check if you, are if you need to update or change the common data or the national data. And this information is available in the Annex 1 of Chapter 2. Thank you, Katarina. Okay, um, thank you, Christina. Uh, I would suggest to try to address the the, the next one, uh, yeah. the next question, and uh, maybe also the, the the last one that we see. Uh, now, in the interest of time, I would like to to address only only this one, and then I'll move to to my next slide. Okay, sure. If I have submitted a month wrong, can I submit an updated CSV file and replace the previously submitted month? So I will take this one. Uh, yes. So that's the way to correct the data. So if you submit a new CSV file for the same month, uh, the new data will override the existing in UPD. So that's the, the way to do the correction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Christina. Okay, um, I would like to share now and continue with the uh, with the presentation. Okay, um, what supporting materials we have? Um, you are well aware that we are constantly working and um, publishing bite-sized uh, videos on the agency uh, website. Um, there is also a link to the uh, UPD introduction webinar for the industry from, from last year. Um, at the same place, we are going to publish the, web, the recording from this uh, webinar. We also are working on the uh, question and answers. Uh, which are currently under revision. We have on variations and um, also um, based on the feedback received um, today, as I said, we'll try to uh, publish these on um, um, that were received on, on Slido and that all those that remain unanswered will be addressed either at future webinars or um, at other uh, question and answer documents. Uh, please also um, keep an eye on the frequently published UPD uh, release notes. Uh, we have listened to, to your feedback and we are working on an executive summary, which, will, which is going to be uh, on the first page of the release notes and gradually it will be uh, uh, updated further. Uh, you are aware about the UPD implementation guide, and as I said um, today, the Chapter 7, version 1.4, uh, is expected to be published within the next couple of days. Actually, we requested the web team uh, from, from the web team to be published uh, tomorrow. Um, and don't forget about the best practice guides uh, from um, CMDV, and also, very important, uh, on the uh, CMDV website, you will you are also able to find the list of contacts per NCA's um, published. 
Um, I also told you about the new functionality, uh, which will be introduced uh, later this uh, quarter, uh, about the uh, uh, product grouping and also about uh, third country product names and other functionality. Uh, when um, these are launched, uh, further information, of course, will be uh, provided. Other potential new functionalities in 2023, which are on our um, radar, is um, a test environment where the marketing authorization holders will be able to test their submissions against uh, products in the product in production environment without having to record uh, the data. Uh, also, a date of creation of package and date of deletion of a package to be included in the download file for volume of sales. And um, another one, which is on the submission of uh, volume of sales, which is about the uh, uh, non-EEA uh, percentage tolerance for volume of sales, which we are currently working on a, on a change, and it will be possible to submit uh, plus minus 5% of um, difference for the non-EEA sales. For the EEA sales, it will remain uh, 800%. Uh, and now I'm moving to my last slide which is about the um, support channels that you have um, for system-related and product uh, or procedure-specific issues. Uh, please contact us via the EMA service desk for the UPD and um, be aware that very soon uh, the EMA service desk will be replaced by EMA service now. This is the same service which you use for the EVVET. Uh, related uh, issues and a communication about this is going to be to be sent uh, by email and we expect this to be soon as well. For any general queries, uh, please contact us via Ask EMA. And um, last but not least, uh, from 1st of July 2023, the VetChange program at emma.europa.eu email will be uh, discontinued and um, soon you'll start to receive an auto-reply uh, message if you post an email to this mailbox saying that from 1st of July this uh, functional mailbox will be discontinued. And with this, um, I'll, we are at the end. I would like to thank you all for the uh, participation, for the active uh, contribution on questions, very useful. We had more than 250, um, at some point there were nearly 280 attendees. Thank you very much. I hope that it was useful for you and I'm um, looking forward to see you uh, in another webinar. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day.